prepare yourself. This is a review for a visual novel, Harmony, Fall of Reverie, which is like saying we're all going to sit around and pretend to be riveted by the action on the screen, and we all end up looking at a gif of a flower with four frames of animation as it blows in the wind. Not a lot of action is an understatement. However, visual novels like Fall of Reverie still have gameplay moments, and Don't Nod's newest game has you collecting the favor of the passions of the world in spirit form as you explore the mysterious disappearance of your own mother in a unique future world mixed with gods, spirituality, and a little bit of cyberpunk. However, Fall of Reverie is the equivalent of a king sheet on a double bed. It's just too much for what it needs to do. If you like the video, eh, maybe subscribe. And as you guys know, I buy a copy of every game I get, even if the dev gives me a code. This story starts out with Polly returning home after years to find her mother missing and tracking her down, making choices, cultivating friendships, making enemies, and collecting clues to discover what happened to her and how it might connect with a larger tech conglomerate that controls their land. As you make choices, you can see what you've chosen and events that are coming up in the future. As you gain the power to talk to and gain the favor of the aspirations, this unlocks more choices. Each of these choices can also further open others or lock some, and you can track it all on a branching board that shows you what choices you've made and give you hints of what may be coming up. Now, Fall's representation is much closer to something along the lines of Banner Saga graphically than it is Life is Strange. 2D characters standing in front of environments and small animations playing out as you choose what to do. As with Life is Strange, Reverie's art style is nostalgia by color. Pastels and soft palettes give the most unique and noteworthy location still a feeling of familiarity that creeps in, mimicking the character's own comments of having been here already once before or there before, because as you as the player somehow, you need to feel the same. Balancing the favor that you've gained from the aspirations and sometimes burning that favor to get hints or gaining more when it comes to making decisions that fit with your alignment, you play through the game. Luckily, the art style here is actually very good, and there's a number of locations flitting in and zooming in via camera pan here and there and then standing outside a shop or inside of a swimming pool that's now an impromptu home base to talk with the other characters in the game. It does feel a bit like a missed opportunity when it comes to exploration, though, especially a lot of these locations. It's not promoted or really even allowed, making you sometimes strain against locations, wishing to see just a little bit more to connect you to the game. Reverie's magic, or it would be, is the use of storytelling devices in its branching story and being able to see those and see past those as you choose specific decisions. There's something that pulls at you here visually, seeing the branching paths on that board. And in many adventure games, you have other paths, but their lines aren't particularly clear if you're not on them. The decision here to let you see and in fact feel sometimes remorse or pride at decisions you made or poorly made is the strongest narrative device the game has going for it. And that's well above its gameplay attempts and its writing. The game has so many icons and movements and symbols when choosing story elements. It can be very confusing at first, even understanding what choice you need to make or can make. It's like a mobile game. So many choices requiring specific numbers of jewels that are collected from the aspirations or spirits and others may remove them. Then add another one, all of them tracked on a separate screen. But it just feels like way too many attempts to squeeze something tangible into something intangible. In many ways, Reverie is a lot like a random player in someone else's well-thought-out and deep-in narrative Dungeon & Dragons game. Names for things that aren't what you expect, the world isn't what you expect, and just when you sort of think you have an idea, some story element comes in that confuses you even further. It's more of a problem, in fact, for all intents and purposes, because it feels like the developers think you know more than you do. And even with a closer grasp on the story and the game's later storytelling elements, diving a bit further in the chapters, it never feels fleshed out. Or it does, but you just can't tell it does. Like you have the crib notes to an exam, and it's going to require far more than you have. If you talk to a lot of visual novel developers, it actually can be quite difficult to parse the player along if it's a choose-your-own-adventure kind of game like this. And that's where Fall of Reverie is at its strength, which is that multiple-choice and playthrough gameplay that leads to you being able to sort of decide your own fate. The only problem is it leaves huge gaps in the narrative, gaps that after even two playthroughs are still not filled in. It takes a great deal of focus to make sure that these kind of games have a narrative flow even if the player doesn't hit all the spots, and in that way, Fall doesn't. It's so distanced from a game that at times already feels like a fever dream that you can be completely left behind. When it comes to the presentation, it's fully voiced with excellent voiceovers that match the art style and the emotions of the situations usually occurring throughout the game. 
And this follows along musically. It's fairly good, though nothing to write home about in a series of soft tracks that are all for the ambiance and not really any kind of intrusive fare, which fits, except a lot of laid back smooth themes that fit the mood don't really elevate it, which is hard anyway, as elevating a barely moving painting would probably require music that overpowered the rest of the presentation. But what this actually does is causes almost a numbing effect where everything feels as if there's no edges to it. And this continues throughout pretty much the entire part of the game. There is no part that you can grasp onto because the narrative doesn't really try to reach out and tell you something. The gameplay's voices and music don't really ever impart the passion that the story is trying to push. And this brings us to the fun factor. Like Pentiment from Obsidian, but with even less occurring on screen, Reverie hinges on its story. However, it's all parsed out in such a slow fashion the game has a difficult time moving ahead, and the story doesn't take full advantage of this weird spiritual nature until much later in the chapters. And even when it does, it's got a, such a standoff way of explaining everyone that it never captures the true drive. Even when you're diving into the mystery of how humans basically funnel energy into these spirits, all the discussion of energy and passion just isn't ever reflected. If the analogy of a king sheet over a double bed is used for gameplay elements far too large, then imagine someone giving you a pillowcase to try to cover the same bed when it comes to the game's narrative and your understanding. It's like a pulled back satellite view of a young fiction section in a library. Snippets of interesting bits, but jumping and lacking the connective tissue that connects the player to the game enough to care. My rating on this would be a wait. And that's it for me. I'm going to go back to try to play Diablo and Street Fighter. What are you playing? I'd like to know in the comments. Peace out. Didn't want to involve you. We had enough problems already with the money and MK. I've seen pictures. How bad was it? Bit of flooding around the island, but the walls held and the roof barely leaked at home. Nora helped board up the bar. <laughs> we had a good laugh at all the drowned drones the next day. Spotted some MK folks trying to scoop them up before they floated out to sea. Competitive drone fishing. <laughs> the sport where nobody wins. They say there's hope for our world. The time is running out. I've stepped into another world beside ours. where ancient beings used to drive our future and change its course. It now falls upon me to decide which paths I want to follow, which future my world needs to pursue. I'm scared, but I'm not alone. There's so much at stake and so many possibilities.